Church of Christ virtual worship service. We want to thank all those who have logged in this morning to be a part of this worship service. Whichever form of media you are using, we want to say thank you. At this time, let us bow in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us to have various outlets of media to still worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask that you bless our congregation, bless those who are hurting, bless those who may be sick at this time. Allow this service this morning to just be an upliftment to their spirit. In your son's name we pray, amen. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. With one accord. Every praise, every praise. Every praise. With one accord, 
Let the Spirit of the Lord rise among us. Let the Spirit of the Lord let it rise, rise among us. Let the praises of our King let it rise among us. Let it rise. Sing it, oh, 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 oh. Let it rise, let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord, let the glory of the Let it rise, rise oh, let it rise, oh, let it rise, oh, 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 oh. let it rise, let it rise, let the songs of the Lord, let the songs of the Lord, let it rise, rise, let the songs of the Lord, let it rise, rise, let the praises of our King, let the praises of our King, Be a 
hallowed be thy name. Once again, we approach your presence knowing that you are the great God and it is you who have made it possible. You've allowed us to see another Lord's Day morning and we say thank you. Father, as we are in times that may be described as troublous times, you're there. We thank you for your presence this morning and we ask you to fill us with your spirit this morning. We exalt you, we extol you, and we magnify the name of your son for his great gift. Father, we know that we're not all that we could be, all that we should be, but we thank you that we're not what we used to be. Thank you for salvation that comes through the saving message of the cross of your son, Jesus Christ. Give us ears that are open to your word and let he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Father, be with your manservant as he imparts your words of wisdom to us and bless him, Father, and bless him real good. And Father, may the message resound with its intended result, that of saving souls and that of changing lives. Father, we know we have those who are on their beds of affliction. We ask you to be with them, be with those who are less fortunate than we are. Father, give us your protection, give us your love. Till you come again for your church, we'll work and we'll watch and we'll fight and we'll pray in Jesus' name, amen. As we continue with our worship service, now God has given us another opportunity to commune together. We will be turning to 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, starting with verse number 23. Remembering at this time that the communion is a, is a memorial to our Lord and Savior. 
The Bible reads, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Uh, please peel back the top layer of your emblem and hold the bread in your hand and let us pray, to God, uh, pray together uh, for the bread. Father in heaven, we understand that the bread represents your body, the church. We pray, Father, that as we participate in this communion, that as we eat this bread, we are mindful of our relationships one with another. And we do this, Father, always remembering the great sacrifice of your son, Jesus. For it is in his name we do humbly pray forever. Amen. You may eat the bread. Also, the scripture says, starting with verse number 25, he says, after the same manner also he took the cup. When he had sub saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray for the cup at this time. Father, we understand also that the cup represents your blood the blood that now saves us from our sin, the blood of salvation. Father, as we participate in this portion of the communion, again, let us reflect on the great sacrifice that you made for us on the cross. For it's in the name of your son, Jesus, we do humbly pray, amen. You may peel back. cover from the cup. You may take it at this time. We're also going to take this opportunity as we continue with our worship service to participate in giving. We're going to use 1 Corinthians, the 16th chapter, verses 1 and two, the Bible reads, now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. God is merciful. He is wonderful. He has blessed us with abundance. And we say, thank you. As we give at this time, please, uh, for those who are in the audience, use the white envelopes for your tithe and the gold envelopes uh, for your offering. For those of of us who are online, you may give by Zelle or going to the church website. Let us pray for the offering. Father, thank you so much for all the gifts that you have given us. We understand that every good and perfect gift comes from above. Father, we pray that the tithes and offerings that we take this morning be used to uplift your kingdom here on earth. We praise your name just now. For it's in the name of your son, Jesus, we do humbly pray. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Brother Carl. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. Keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. He keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. Keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again. He keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again. And he gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. Keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. Keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. Amen. There's a happy land of promise over in the great beyond where the saved of earth shall soon the glory share. And the souls of men shall enter and live on forevermore. Everybody will be happy over there. And everybody will be happy, will be happy over there. We will shout and sing his praise, everybody will be happy over there. There will be someone who saved us and who kept us by his grace and who brought us to that land so bright and fair. We will praise his name forever as we look upon his face. Everybody will be happy over there. And everybody, everybody will be happy. Will be happy. happy. Will, be will be happy over there. We will shout and sing his praise. Everybody will be happy over there. And everybody, everybody will be happy. happy. We will be happy over there. We will shout and sing his praise. Everybody will be happy over there. And everybody, everybody will be happy over there, over there. We will be happy over there. We 
will shout and sing his praises. Ending ages, everybody happy over there. Let the assembly say amen. <clears throat> Certainly appreciate your presence on today. Uh, as you can tell, uh, we're having a few technical difficulties, but we've done our best to uh, be representative of the quality that we seek to portray here at Reseda. Uh, your patience and your prayers are always appreciated. Uh, and hats off to our hardworking uh, tech and AV team. Uh, you continue to do uh, the best you can possibly do weekly. Uh, George is away today with Zoom, but he's working it remotely, and Amy's back there, and Lionel's back there. We just want to let you know that we appreciate you, and let's do the best we can uh, to finish today uh, in, a, in a positive way. Uh, to those of you who are visiting with us here at Receded, we certainly want to welcome you to the congregation. Our senior minister, Dr. Winrose, away, he and his lovely wife uh, with the family. They'll be back uh, here pretty soon. Uh, so I've been asked to, to step in this morning and to share a word, and I'm certainly uh, pleased to do that. Go with me this morning to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And we're going to begin our reading at verse number eight, 2 Corinthians chapter four, verses eight and nine, 2 Corinthians four, verse eight and nine. The great apostle Paul is writing to this young church at Corinth. Uh, this is the second of two epistles where Paul is going to touch on, at least in this particular verse, uh, some ways that we can look at living the Christian life. And he says, from the NASB or the New American Standard Bible, Paul says, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, Paul says, but not despairing. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroy. I want to share with you this morning for a few moments from the subject entitled, How to Make the Most Out of Being Miserable. How to Make the Most Out of Being Miserable. There are a couple of movies during this time of year that I enjoy watching. Uh, I really don't look to watch them in any other part of the year except uh, around this time of the year. And one of my favorites is A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. And I just chuckle when I hear Scrooge say, bah humbug. And it's always amazed me that around this time of year, when there's so much to be thankful for, as we are certainly mindful of this time of year, which uh, society points to the birth of Jesus Christ. And of course, we know perhaps Jesus was born at another time. It's just the idea that society is giving some attention to the birth of our Lord and Savior. So much to be grateful for, so much to be thankful for, so much to shout hallelujah about. Even with all of that, there are still those who will always find a way to be miserable or to see themselves in the kind of place where they're just strictly unhappy. So let me ask you this morning, as you think about where you are right now on this 26th of December, dealing with all the things that you're dealing with in life, what kind of emotions are you embracing this time of year? In this season of thanks and abundance, we too can attach ourselves to negative emotions that drive our mental and spiritual health. Though all around us, people can be happy and grateful and excited, we're focused on things that bring us down. So today, I wanted to give you some encouragement on how to deal with miserable 
circumstances. Now you can say amen if you've ever been miserable. Amen. So my sermon proposition for today simply is this. Being miserable can, and I want to emphasize can, can lead to greater happiness, more abundant joy, and deeper faith and trust in God. So let me just stay there just for a little while. Being miserable can lead to greater happiness, more abundant joy, and deeper faith and trust in God. So in essence, what I hope to do today is simply to encourage you to know that these current circumstances that you're experiencing could very well be the catalyst, if you will, to something positive. But Brother Everson, that doesn't feel, that doesn't necessarily feel like those two thoughts go together. Well, just kind of bear with me on today. Point number one, again, we're in 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 9. Three thoughts here, three quick thoughts. Number one, being miserable can be a state of mind and not necessarily a reflection of your situation. Let me give you an example of how that works. So here you are, staying in your home, and you're a little disappointed this year. You didn't get all the things that you wanted to get or that you wanted to get others for Christmas. And so your lip is maybe po is, is, uh, poked out and you're just a little unhappy. Or maybe you've got some news here lately and, 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 and you just are um, a little distraught. I guarantee you in other parts of the world, if people had what we have, not only would they be happy, but they would be extremely joyful. Why? Because to even have a place of your own that you can call home, a lot of people don't have that. To even have friends and family and, and, and loved ones that you're connected to, that you can exchange gifts and exchange pleasantries with many people today don't have that so it's not necessarily that your circumstances are making you miserable it's that your perspective of your circumstances is what perhaps is driving you to be miserable the optimist and the pessimist looks at a glass that uh, is filled halfway full of water. The pessimist says that it's half empty. The optimist says that it's half full. As you look at your current circumstances today, I want you to think about your perspective and how you can perhaps look at your perspective from a global view. In other words, is there anything positive that I can see in what I'm experiencing today. In the text, Paul gives four contrasting statements that reveal his true perspective. Let's go back to 2 Corinthians 4, 8, and 9. Let's look at it real, real quickly here. Paul says we are afflicted, but not crushed. That's one. We are perplexed, but not despairing. That's two. We are persecuted, but not abandoned. That's three. And we are struck down, but not destroyed. Paul's point simply is this, that though Paul looks upon his life and he looks upon the circumstances in his life as being challenged, those circumstances in and of themselves do not have the power to crush him. And I want to encourage you today that as you think about these things that you're experiencing in your life, not to allow these things to crush you or to feel the weight so much so that you're not breathing. So number one, being miserable can be a state of mind and not necessarily a reflection of your situation. Number two, being miserable often is a result of our sense of entitlement and misperception that nothing challenging 
is ever supposed to happen to us. You know, if there's false doctrine that we hear in the Lord's church, that we hear in the religious community, this has to be one of the most misleading statements. Let me read it again. Number one, that we feel like we are entitled to always be on the blessing side of God. Number two, that there's never supposed to be anything challenging that happens to us. That is, we feel that we are entitled to a life of abundance, to a life of pleasure, to a life where when we look at our current situation, that we're good, everything's great, everybody's fine, everybody's healthy. I want to tell you today that Paul gives us bona fide proof that you can do what you're supposed to do and God can still allow things to happen to you that have the potential to knock you down and knock you out. Now, they have the potential to do that. And I find it very interesting here that we are so entitled and that we feel that as we look upon our lives and these things that we're experiencing in our lives that we're not supposed to have difficulty. We're not supposed to have challenges. Well, I stopped by here to tell you today not only will we have periods in our lives where we are challenged, but we will be greatly challenged. Now, if I ask you today to raise your hand and tell me about the challenges that you're dealing with, no doubt I'd hear some of these types of things. Brother Edmerson, my health is failing. I'm currently dealing with uh, some sickness and it really is affecting me. Brother Edmerson, my money is funny. You know, it's challenging. I, I get paid and my check is already gone. Somebody ought to say amen. <laughs> Brother Edmerson, my car, of all the times for my car to go down, it's choosing to go down now. I don't get paid until the first. What am I going to do all week? Or maybe you're taking care of a loved one, or you have some children that you're taking care of and their health is not where they should be. In and of themselves, each of these situations has the potential to be extremely challenging. Watch this now. And it's all a part of the Christian experience. Paul shows us that part of the way I live my life for God it's to experience the same things that everyone experienced in the cosmos or the universe, and yet my relationship to it is different. Yes, those things are challenging. Yes, those things can be overwhelming, but because my hand is in God's hand, those things are not going to destroy me. Do I have a witness? So number one, being miserable can be a state of mind and not necessarily a reflection of your situation. Number two, being miserable often is a result of our sense of entitlement and misperception that nothing challenging is ever supposed to happen to us. And then finally, number three, challenging circumstances have the potential to develop you, mature you, and make you more fit to serve God. That's the only way that I can make sense of this whole relationship between the believer and our being miserable, the believer and our experiencing difficulty is that in the midst of this challenging circumstance, God is trying to make a better, more mature, more fit me. I just kind of think about some of the things that we're dealing with now in our community. There are some that look, that, 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 that look at the news and our uh, way to respond is to be fearful. And I certainly want to encourage you today to have an appropriate emotional response. Now, uh, we will probably be dealing with some aspects of COVID-19 and variants for some time. And I want to encourage you not to be fearful, but to be faithful. 
I want to encourage you to know that, yes, this is but just a moment. This is but just a season. Watch this now. And in the midst of all that we're dealing with, how can I allow this to help me become a more better, a more faithful, a more mature person? Ask yourself that right now. For Paul, his affliction served multiple purposes. One purpose is that it reminded him of his need for God. You know, one of the things that uh, challenging circumstances do is that it breathes within us a certain kind of humility. And in that humility, we really become with our human frailness and our vulnerability. So one of the things that we often see in Paul's life as Paul deals with difficulty is that Paul turns to God and he allows what he's experiencing to deepen his faith and his trust and his belief in God. So I want to ask you today that as you are dealing with, as we are dealing with all of what we're facing, I want to encourage you to allow it to deepen your faith and your trust in God. Well, wait a minute, Brother Emerson. I don't think you understand my situation. I'm not feeling the best right now. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm, I'm being challenged right now at this very minute. Our faith and our trust in God is just that. It's based on God. It's not based on necessarily the outcome of what we're dealing with. What do you mean, preacher? It could be some things that God is seeking to accomplish in your life. And the only way that those things can be accomplished is through and in this challenging moment that you're dealing with right now. So the faithful believer approaches life like this. Yes, I'm being challenged at this very moment, but I'm not going to allow this challenge to overwhelm me. I'm going to allow this challenge to turn me to God and allow this challenge to help grow and anchor my faith. So no matter what the outcome, I'm going to come out of it a better, a stronger, and a more mature person. Another purpose it served was to inform Paul's mentality about suffering. Suffering is a part of the life, Paul would say, I signed up for. I must take the bad with the good. Jesus can tell us on occasion that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. There is a universality to these things that we experience in our lives. And I just need to know that as I'm here on this time side of life, I'm going to have some moments in my life where my health is where it should be. And then I'm going to have some moments in my life where my health is questionable. I'm going to have some moments in my life where I look at my bank account and I got a couple zeros after the one. Amen. And then I'm going to have some moments in my life where I look at my bank account and I got that little negative symbol, amen. It's just a part of the human experience. We're gonna have those ebbs and flows and ups and downs. I look at my marriage, I look at my family. Some seasons, things are wonderful. Some seasons, things are challenging. It's just that, a season. So finally here, as you think about your being uh, miserable, perhaps. So maybe you're ministering to someone who may be miserable. Let me give you four quick things and then we'll extend the Savior's invitation. Number one, how will you handle your misery? How will you handle your misery? That, that, that is the million dollar question today. And maybe you're wrestling with something that, that, that's not only on your doorstep, but it's, came, it, it, it's, it's coming to your home, found the sofa, and sat down right there. How will you handle misery? Number two, will you become better or bitter? When you think about 
experiencing, what you're experiencing in life as you're coming out of it, will you be a better person or will you be a bitter person? Number three, will you choose deepening your joy or oversizing your current situation? Again, the choice is yours. Am I going to allow the things that I'm experiencing to deepen my joy and my faith and my trust in God? Or am I going to allow it to just simply oversize and it's all I see day in and day out? Oh, I want to encourage you not to do that. And then finally, will you permit the misery that you're tasting to become the catalyst for positive spiritual and emotional transformation. That's what it's all about today. Perhaps this morning you don't share our religious convictions. We invite you to respond to the Savior's invitation. We want to encourage you uh, to, 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 to respond faithfully, faithfully to the Savior's invitation. Well, Brother Everson, how do I do that? Hearing and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, repenting of your sin, confessing Jesus as being the Christ, and then we'll baptize you this morning for the remission, for the washing away of your sins. Perhaps you're in the faith and your circumstances have gotten the best of you. We encourage you to come right now as we all stand and sing, my dear brother, a song of encouragement. Can he, my Savior calling? I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. Take thy cross and follow, follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he the assembly say amen. amen amen we certainly appreciate your presence on today uh, we're going to go ahead uh, and offer a word of prayer and then our service our service today will have been concluded uh, for the receipt of faithful it's always good to see you we just want to encourage you this week to have a wonderful a wonderful week uh, in the lord uh, so in just a moment we're going to ask you to um uh, to just go ahead and remain seated and we'll have a word of prayer and then Mike's going to give us some direction on how he wants us to exit the assembly on uh, today. So we ask you to go ahead and come and close us out with the word of prayer. God bless. Again, we, we uh, always are, are moved uh, when God gives us the opportunity and privilege to worship him in spirit and in truth. I'm going to ask if you would just bow your heads and we'll word a dismissal prayer. Father, it's, it's again as your children, we thank you for, for this great privilege. Father, not only to, to come and to declare you to be the Lord, to you to be God, the God of our lives, Father, we're just thankful for the privilege that you have attracted us to you through your son, through love. Be with us, Father, as we depart from this place of this, this, today. And Father, we just ask that you would protect us and, and go with us. For it's in Christ Jesus' name we're praying. Amen. Amen.
Yeah. 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 Yeah.